Everybody, if you at home, grab a Bible. God bless you. Ooh, grab a Bible. It says hot. Amen. It's hot. It's all right. Grab a Bible. Grab a Bible. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap before we get started. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Turn me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Go to verse 1. Luke chapter 13. Go to verse 1. When you got it, say amen. If you ain't got it, say hold up. Luke chapter 13. Go to verse 1. Luke chapter 13. Go to verse 1. All right, it says, There were present at the season some that told him, this being Jesus of the Galatians, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. So this is Luke chapter 13, verse 1. It says, There be some who were present at the season, and they told of the Galatians, whose blood had been mingled with their sacrifices. Let me translate that. Uh, Jesus was hanging out with some of his disciples. The short story was this. Uh, there were some who were there, and they didn't have CNN back then. So uh, news only traveled by word of mouth. And they told about the Galatians, and, and what had happened with the Galatians, a whole lot of people had gotten killed by Pilate. Pilate was the man who eventually was ended up trying to chase Jesus down to kill Jesus. So a lot of people had gotten killed. And that, let's read verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 2 says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose that ye were these Galatians, were sinners above all the Galatians, because they had suffered such sins. Verse 3. I tell you, nay, 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 but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So Jesus said to his disciples this. He said, um, do you think that these people died because they were sinners? And God says no. But he says this. I want you to know this. If you don't repent, you will die too in sin. You will die too in sin. Let's keep reading. Verse 3. Verse 3. It says, I tell you next, if you repent, you shall also likewise perish. Verse 4. Of those 18 that were upon the tower in Siloam that fell, and it slew them. Do you think that they were also sinners above all the men that dwelt in Jerusalem? And Jesus said again, I tell you, nay, nay, nay. But except ye repent, ye too shall likewise also perish. So the thing is, terrible things have been happening for thousands of years. This was written over 2,000 years ago. When the tower fell at Siloam, 18 people died instantly. Today in Valveda, Texas, 18 people died instantly. Uh, sometimes when these things happen, we start to question life. We start to question our reality. Some people get afraid. I, I'm not going to church. I'm not going to the movies. I'm not going grocery shopping. You can't live your life in fear. For when God calls you, you can't stop it. God has already ordained the date that you will go into the next life. So whenever he ordained that date, you can't stop that date. But the thing you can do is fulfill the purpose while you have the time. We have to be in prayer. You can't pray that God keep me, prevent me from things happening. You pray that God help you move into the purpose that he's called you to live for. For whatever will happen, it will happen. But the thing is, God says if you repent, when you meet him, you will meet him in a positive thing. Next, turn me to the book of Job. Book of Job, 1 and 21. The book of Job, 1 and 21. Job, J-O-B, 1 and 21. Job, go to Psalms, make a left. Job 1 and 21. When you guys say amen. Job 1 and 21. It says, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return hither. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return hither. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, when things happen, we have to understand that God is in control of everything. Job was a man who lost much. He lost all his money, all his children died. The only thing he kept was his life and his wife. 
Everything around him had died. Everything around him he lost. He was a rich man and he lost all his money. He had boils all over his skin. His very health was gone. All of his children had 10 children. All of them had died. All his wealth was gone. The only thing that God said is that the devil couldn't take his life. But he says, blessed be the name of the Lord. Sometimes when crazy things happen, you got to say the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But I bless you, God, regardless of what I'm going through. And that's not easy because sometimes you lose things that are close to you. But blessed be the name of the Lord. For if it wasn't for God on my side, where would I be? For without God, I am nothing. So all we can do is pray. And because when we pray, we're in constant communication with God. Next, turn me to the book of Judges. Thank you, Jesus. Judges. Judges chapter 12, verse 2. Judges. Judges chapter 12, verse 2. Judges chapter 12, verse 2 says this. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Amnon. And when I called you, ye delivered me not out of their hands. Verse 3. And when I saw that you didn't answer my call, I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Amnon, and the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore then are ye come up unto this day to fight against me? Here's what had happened. There was a man, there was a man named Jephthah. Long story short, he was in trouble. And when he got in trouble, he picked up his phone and he called his friends. But his friends didn't come to his rescue. He called his family members. And his family members didn't come to his rescue. He called the police. And the police didn't come to his rescue. So what he did was, he says, I guess nobody is coming. So he says, I'm going to have to get myself out of this situation. So he put his hand in God's hand. And God delivered him. What does that mean for you and I? Some of you have already been in situations that you've called people and nobody picked up. But God kept you in spite of the circumstances. You made a phone call to a friend and nobody picked up. You called your mama and nobody picked up. But God kept you. And the thing is, you realize that your faith relies in God. You can't trust in man. You can't trust in your friend. You can't trust in your husband or wife sometimes. Sometimes the only person you can trust is God. Because God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Sometimes I've had lonely nights, but God was there. Sometimes I had financial trouble, but God was there. Sometimes I had some negative things to go through and negative experiences. But whenever you put your trust in God, God will never fail you. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Think about the times that he delivered you. Think about the things that you went through and how he was there for you. You made it, not because of a friend, not because of a relative. You made it because God was always by your side. The Bible says he will go before you. He will go behind you. He will go above you. He will go beneath you. And he will go in you. God is always there. He will never fail you. He will never leave you. Next, turn with me, turn with me, turn with me to Isaiah 46 and 10. Isaiah 46 and 10. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 46 and 10. Isaiah 46 and 10. It says, declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do it with my pleasure. Declaring the end from the beginning. God is the only one that knows your future. See, God, when God tells a story, he tells it from the end to the beginning. He ain't like us. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You can go see that fortune teller. They can say, well, you the Scorpio and you the Taurus. And, and, yeah, but they don't know what's going to happen in the next three minutes. God already knows the end from the beginning. So why are you trusting in a man that don't know what's going to happen 10 seconds from now? Put your trust in God because God has already written your story. God has already told what's going to happen. He's spoken into the atmosphere. Before the beginning began to begin, he called you into existence. And he wrote your life pathway. So put your trust in God. Never put your trust in man. Because God understands the way that you try. Turn to John 8 47. 
John 8 and 47. John 8 and 47. John 8 and 47. It says, He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. That's cold. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Whose words do you hear? See, the, the, the crazy thing about this generation is social media, social media, social media. Uh, you got 24 hours of foolishness. You got Instagram. You got Disney Plus. You got Hulu. You got HBO Max. You got Paramount Plus. You got all kinds. You got information 24 hours a day. But God is not speaking through ESPN. God is not speaking through ABC. God is not speaking through CNN. God is speaking through his word and through the men of God. And God says, if you can't hear him, you're not his children. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's Romans 10, 17. The only way you hear God is if you're listening for God. If you're, if you're constantly involved in social media, are you playing video games 20 hours per day? Are you smoking weed and you're doing all these things? You're not hearing from God. Because when God speaks, he often speaks in the still of the night. He often speaks in the, in the early hours in the morning. He speaks in a low voice because he wants your undivided attention. God is not going to share you with CNN. God is not going to share you with Netflix. God says, and when I speak to you, it's going to be in the still voice. See, my boy John, he, he gets on the freeway. He's driving sometimes 4 o'clock in the morning. That's when God will speak. God will speak when you have a little gospel music playing in the background and you got your Bible open and you're reading. That's when God will speak. God said, if you're not hearing him, you might not be from him. Start listening for the voice of God. Seek his face. Turn to Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 33 and chapter 1. Jeremiah 33, chapter 1. We're going to read verses 1, 2, and 3. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was shut up in the court of prison, saying, Thus said the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer you, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou hast knowest not. Uh, Jeremiah had got caught up, and he went to prison. He was locked up. He was shackled up. He was in a bad space. But in that bad space, he never gave up on God. What does that mean for you and I? Sometimes you're going to mess up. We mess up all the time. I'm going to speak. We're going to preach about that in a second. We mess up. We are all sinners. No man can stand before God and says, God, I'm perfect. I haven't done anything. I haven't had sex. I haven't done the, the devil is alive. We're all sinners. We all have flaws. Jeremiah was in prison. It didn't even tell you why he went to jail. But he was in jail for whatever reason. But when he was in jail, he called on God. What does that mean for you and I? You're never too low to call on God. God is not embarrassed because you're in jail. God is not embarrassed because you're at the abortion clinic. God is not embarrassed because you're at the weed shop. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God is with you wherever you go. So never be ashamed to call on him. Because God loves you with the evidence. See, God ain't like man. See, your friends will turn on you and get embarrassed because of the things you go through. You, you tell your friend that you're going through something, they stop calling you. They, they send you the voicemail. God says, I'm not embarrassed by you because I love you for who you are. We serve a God who's a God of love. He loves us in spite of our flaws. And I remember what my, one of my favorite bishops says. He says, God loves you because he knows you. He knows the flaws that you have, but he loves you anyway. We serve a God of love. God loves you. God loves you. Next, turn with me. Turn with me to Jonah. I'm sorry, Luke 11 and 28. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 11 and 28. Luke 11 and 28. Luke 11 and 28. It says, but he says, yes. Rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. 
Verse 29. And when the people were gathered together, he began to say, this is an evil generation. They seek a sign from God. And there shall be no sign given, but the sign that Jonah the prophet talked about. Verse 30. For as Jonah was the sign to the Ninevites, so also shall be the son of man to this generation. God called the people a evil generation. He called them evil because they weren't even thinking about God. Imagine this. 2,000 years ago, Jesus walked on earth. He was right there in their face. And people walked right by and didn't realize the God of the universe, the God who made the ants, the God that made the atoms, the God that made the sun, the God that made the stars was right there. And they said, he ain't God. And he looked at them and said, wow. Because God could see their hearts. They didn't even perceive that God was there with them. He said, they want a sign. They want me to do something special. And he said, even though I did miracles, they ignored them. But he said, I sent Jonah. He said, Jonah talked about his experiences in the well, and they still ignored God. What does that mean for you and I? God is there in your experiences. When you almost die, that's how you know God is there. Uh, when, 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 you, when you get money that you didn't deserve, that's how you know God is there. When you have health, you've been eating hot Cheetos since you were six years old, and you ain't got nothing wrong with you. God is there. Uh, you, you grew up in Compton and you didn't get shot in the drive-by. God is there. You drove without a driver's license and didn't go to jail. God is there. And your mom and your daddy had issues. God was there. Whatever the experience was, you get to know God through your experiences. God delivered you. God kept you. See, the thing is, each and every one of us is a statistic. You're young. you black. You should have been in a negative space. But God kept you. God kept you last night when you were asleep. God protected you. You know what's so funny? Some people die in their homes when they turn on the heat called carbon monoxide poison. God kept you. Some people, I know a man, I hate to say this, it, it was a friend of mine, he was a barber. He, he died in his car. This is the, I've never heard nothing like this in my life. He was in his car, I promise you, in Long Beach at the Rouse. He dropped his car keys. He bent down to pick up the car keys and got stuck between the steering wheel and his shifter. And he died right there in the parking lot, stuck in between the shifter and his steering wheel. People walked by him for hours. They thought he was just bending down. They didn't realize that he got stuck he couldn't pull up, and he was screaming and yelling, but his window was raised up. God keeps you. See, the devil wants to destroy you. The Bible comes, says that Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But it's God that kept you when the enemy wants to destroy you. Never take life for granted. Never take anything for granted. Never take your family for granted. Never take your job for granted. Never take your house for granted. Never take the fact that you walk in for granted because you are living by the grace and the blessings of God. It's God that keeps you. We, we don't keep ourselves. One of the biggest lies of COVID, I can protect myself. I can protect my life. And that's a lie of the pit of hell. It's nothing but the grace of God that keeps you. It's God that loves you. It's God that protects you. And the very last thing, turn me to Matthew 3. Matthew 3. Mary, yeah, 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. And we're going to read 10 through 11. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. And we're going to read chapters 10 through 11. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away in a great noise and the elements shall melt with a ferment of heat. The earth also and the works thereof shall be burnt up. Seeing this, that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye be in the holy conversation of godliness? Let me translate that. The Bible said God is coming like a thief in the night. And so when I was a kid, I always heard this, that God is going to come and the earth is going to burn up and, and we all going to disappear. And I always heard these things. Of course, I never saw it. But I saw people who died and I don't know if they knew God. So God says this, 
Stop looking for the heaven, the heavens to burn up and for all kind of crazy stuff. Because when he calls you home, that's your time. When God calls you home, when you wake up, the first thing you're going to see is him. It says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. When you die, the first face you're going to see is God. And you don't want to see him while you're stuck in the life and sin that you live. Well, what do you mean about that? See, you don't want to die not trusted in God. You want to die without having faith. You don't want to die without having the hope of the Lord. See, what Satan wants you to believe is that that job can deliver you out of your circumstance. It is nothing but the grace of God. In fact, turn to Ephesians 2 and 8. Ephesians 2 and 8. Ephesians 2 and 8. We ain't got much longer. Ephesians 2 and 8. You got to see this. Ephesians 2 and 8. Ephesians 2 and 8. It says, For by grace you are saved through faith, that of not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For by grace you are saved through faith. See, what the devil wants to do, he wants to take your faith away. He wants to steal your faith. He wants to give you so many, so much negativity that you stop believing in God. And I know so many people that walked away from the church because they said this happened. Oh, oh, the pastor slept with my sister. Oh, this, and they walk away from God. God, the devil wants to steal their faith because Satan realized if he can steal your faith, he can get you sent to hell. The Bible says we're saved by faith. Your faith is your greatest asset. It's your faith that will keep you out of the gates of hell. It is your faith that will allow you to go to heaven. See, we can't be saved by being good. We can't be saved by being good. If we can be saved by being good, Jesus didn't even need to come to earth. The reason why Jesus came to earth is because no man can be good. All men are sinners. Let's read it. Ecclesiastes 7 and 20. I promise you we're done. We're done. I just want you to see it. Ecclesiastes 7 and 20. Ecclesiastes. Thank you, Jesus. 7 and 20. I love this Bible. Ecclesiastes 7 and 20. It says, For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. The Bible says, Ain't nobody on this planet so good that they never sin." Uh, I got a call today, and, and the person was like, well, people that have sex, they going to hell. I'm like, what? So, so you said because they fornicate, they go, yeah, they going straight to hell. I don't have no sex, so I'm going to heaven. Nope, that ain't how that works. You're not saved by your acts. It says being saved is a gift from God. It's your faith that saves you. Don't let church people trick you with all that foolishness. You got to wear your dress long. You got to do this. You can't go party. You can't drink. You can't do that. It's a lie out of the pit of hell. Because I knew some people who did all those things and were the most evil people that I ever met in my life. It's not those acts that save you. It's your relationship with God. See, God wants to be with you in relationship for an eternity. His word says that every man is a sinner. It also says in the book of Isaiah that your righteousness is as filthy rags. Even when you think you're doing good, oh, I'm doing so perfect, I'm the best Christian ever. God says, you're still dirty and nasty to me. Get away. He says, if you coming up to me talking about you good, he says, you're dirty, you're raggedy, and you're ratchet. You smell to me. But if you stand before God with a good heart, if you stand before God with a good mind, if you stand before God with a good spirit, and he sees your soul, he says, come, my child. You're one of mine. Because it's about relationship. We're never good enough to go to heaven. It's always our relationship with God. Matter of fact, turn to the book of Romans. Book of Romans. Book of Romans. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I got to give you these scriptures because y'all going to need this to fight these Bible thumpers. Romans chapter 5, verse 20. Romans chapter 5, verse 20. It says, moreover, the law entered. That's the Ten Commandments. That the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. I'm going to translate it. That as sin reigned unto death, even so grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. It says, when the Ten Commandments entered, all men were going to hell. That's why one of the first things that Jesus did when he died on the cross, he went down to hell and he started preaching to the people that were in hell. 
Because many people went to hell because they couldn't follow the laws of the Ten Commandments. They were kept sinning. They kept breaking law. So Jesus, when he got off the cross and he went in the spirit realm, he went down to hell. He started preaching. He started preaching and said, turn your life away to these people in hell to give them an opportunity to be saved. The thing is, we can't get saved by following laws because we continuously break the law. But we get saved by our relationship with Christ. And it's that relationship that will make you supersede and have a, a true relationship with him and go to the next level with him. And the very last thing, you said that 20 times ago. I'm sorry, I got to give you these scriptures. Romans 8 and 24. Romans 8 and 24. Romans 8 and 24. Thank you, Jesus. We done, I promise you, we done. Uh, if you if we read one more, Masaki, we done, I promise you. Romans 8 and 24. It says, for we are saved by hope. But hope is that that is not seen. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we the patience for it? It says we're saved by hope. What is hope? Hope means you have a better tomorrow. Hope means that your child will do better than you. Hope means that you will be blessed more in the future than you are right now. God says we're saved by our hope. See, what the devil wants to do he wants to steal your dreams. He wants to tell you you will never make it. He wants to steal your hope. Because he knows that if you have a faith and hope that you're going to get to see God. That's why Satan tried to take your dreams away. That's why Satan tried to steal all the positive things in your life. That's why he, he constantly uh, floods the news with negative events. So you can lose hope. But the devil is a liar. For God says. As long as you have me, you have hope. As long as God is by your side, you have hope. Because if God be for you, nothing can be against you. And if God reigns in your life, you know that you're going to meet him one day. And you know that everything you will overcome. But that's right, grandbaby. You will overcome every obstacle if God is by your side. Because you have hope. And I'm going to read John 3.16. You don't have to turn to it. Because I don't want to get in trouble. I'm going to read John 3 and 16. So we can really understand what it means. John 3 and 16. It said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And verse 18 said, He that believeth on him shall not be condemned. But he that believeth not on him is condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. God says he came into the world to save you. God came to save you but love. That's why love is the strongest thing in the atmosphere. Love is the strongest thing in the universe. It is love that gives you an opportunity to have hope. Today, in, in the city of Valdeville, in Texas, some people lost the lights in their life. They lost their children. Some people lost husbands or wives. And the enemy seems like he reigns supreme this day. But as I pray that God gives them peace to know that God has done his will. And all we can do is live for him. I hope God gives them peace to know that tomorrow will be better. See, one day we'll all be in a box. One day we'll all have a ceremony. But it's not that, that it's, that's not the end, that's only the beginning of the next life. Because God calls us to a greater horizon. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Everybody stand. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you guys. Bless you guys. So, just know this, young people. Life has no guarantees. There are no guarantees in life. There are no guarantees. There are no guarantees. That's one thing. I'm 52. There are no guarantees. But if you put your hand in God's hand, he will order your steps. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered. So even when you fall, 
Like she, they had a fall the other night. The devil came and destroyed that car. God blessed them more so that even though they had that negative thing, they're better today than they were last week. Because God is ordering your steps. So even when you stumble and you have negative experiences, if you have a relationship with God and he's truly your Lord and Savior, you have faith in him. And regardless of what you're going through, you say, God, I know you in this. In Romans 8 and 28, it says this. It says, it's all good for those who love God. That means even the negative things will end up for your good. I, I was watching a story today, and I'm going to shut up. It's about a man. His name is Robert Kraft. Robert Kraft. Robert Kraft got fired. He worked at a cheese factory. He got fired. So that's a bad day. But instead of getting fired and laying down, what he did was he said, well, I got fired. I'm going to make my own cheese. And you know that as Kraft macaroni and cheese. It became a multi-billion dollar uh, industry. The reason it started is because he got fired. Imagine if they would have kept him on the job, you wouldn't have Kraft foods, you wouldn't have cheese slices, you wouldn't have had none of that. Because he invented all those things because he got fired. You'd be surprised what happens when, when the devil thinks he knocked you down. God has a way because, see, the devil don't know the future, but God does. God knew when he got fired that he was going to go home and he was going to invent uh, Kraft macaroni and cheese and all the rest of the things that went with it, which led to pizza and everything else that we have. Had not that man been fired, you wouldn't know what pizza was. You wouldn't know what grilled cheese was because it wouldn't have been invented. See, God has a way that is not like our ways. Because God tells the end from the beginning. He knows the future. So keep your faith in him. Never stop believing. Just because it gets bad, just because you go through something, you keep saying, you know what, God? I didn't like today, but I thank God for today. Because I know that tomorrow will be better. And you know what that is? Hope. And if you have hope, this devil can't defeat you. If you have hope, you're going to be much more powerful than everybody else because you have hope. Never give up. Never give up. Amen. Anybody have any words before we wrap this up? All right, everybody, give God a hand. Clap. Thank you, Mom. Mom, like, oh, you better do the program. Thank you, Mom. All right, everybody, grab a hand. Grab a hand. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word you went for. We thank for all these beautiful young souls. We thank you for that young baby. Father, we ask that you give a spirit of repentance for those young families that are going through involved the bill, Father. Father, you say your ways are not like our ways, Father. We don't know why certain things happen. But we thank you, Father, for giving us another opportunity just to say thank you, Father. And we bless your name, Father. And we thank you, Father, for life, health, and strength. We thank you for our family. We thank you, Father, for the breath that's in our, in our lungs. And we thank you, Father, for the feet that we stand on. And we, we just thank you, Father, for everything that you've done for us, Father. And we ask, Father, that you help us to become better. Squeeze the hand next to you. I squeeze life into that hand. I squeeze prosperity into that hand. I squeeze vision and purpose into that hand. That these young people come to hand and not to tell. That they become victorious and never defeated. So that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, Father. Father, we ask that you continue to give us hope, Father. We continue to ask that you help us to believe and stretch our faith, Father. We ask that you increase our territories, Father. And that you bless us indeed, Father, so we can be a blessing to others. We ask all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hug somebody. I get to, oh, thank you, Dad. Bless you. I got allergies. To what? What's up? 
That's funny. Everybody keeps saying hey or like hi or something. They be talking to me. She's not hi. No, no, I'm saying hi to Oh, the cups is back there. Oh, it's still on, sir.